Okay, so if you're new to the world of virtual assistants and BPOs, business process outsourcing centers, that's gonna be the topic for today. What's it like to work in a BPO? And today I've got Leo with me, who's worked in all kinds of BPOs, and he's gonna give us some insights. That's coming right up. Okay, so maybe you've worked with virtual assistants in the past, or maybe you're thinking of working with virtual assistants, but I think it'd be really interesting to know what's it like to be a virtual assistant and what's it like to work in some of these business process outsourcing organizations or BPOs. So Leo, thanks for joining us today to tell us all about it. Now you've, you've been working in that sort of virtual assistant industry for a while, haven't you? Um, in terms of the virtual assistance um, environment, I've been working for nearly three years. Okay. Um, I've been working with huge BPO companies for around 10 years oh. prior to moving to this type of setting. Um, I guess the, the main difference though is that with the huge BPO uh, companies, mm. it's so clustered in such a way that there's a huge number of people working mm. for one client with the same task. Okay. And it's pretty much controlled in a way that there has to be a service level that needs to be maintained every okay. hour. Okay. So that means their break schedules are also scheduled and such. Okay. Now, the difference with working on such a setup and with the virtual dundles setup is that mm. um, the breaks in huge BPO companies are sometimes compromised that uh, I okay. even experience having a lunch break towards the end part of my shift. Okay. So, I have so you get a lunch break, but it might be at the end of the day. <laughs> That's right. So I have my two 15 minute breaks um, yeah. on the, the early part of the shift yeah. while the lunch break is towards the end. Okay. Unlike here that we really take our time in terms of taking lunch in the middle of the day, yeah. um, ensuring that our employees have the sufficient break needed for, mm. for midday, while at the same time not compromising okay. the productivity hours for their clients. <clears throat> okay. Now, so, now Leo. Let's talk turkey here. So some people watching here are going to be thinking, what's it really like working in a BPO? Are they sweatshops? And what's the environment like in some mm. of these big ones? So, you know, I have this vision of rows and rows of people and team leaders going, you know, harder, harder, make those calls. That is a, a possibility and mm. is sometimes happening because yeah. there's so much being treated as producers of, of numbers. Yeah, okay. So sometimes it can be tough on, on mm. employees to be on that environment, especially if if they're not so used to, mm. to such culture. Um, and like here, we are tough, yes, but it's more of the character and the behavior that we are tough about. Mm. Um, in terms of the productivity, um, we hire the right employees. Mm. So that's not much of a concern in terms of productivity and the skills level. Um, it's more of the tenure of employees mm. working in a company. And like in huge BPOs, most of the time people come and go. Oh, okay. So if they're not enjoying or they're not comfortable mm. with the environment, they just yeah. easily go in and look for another yeah. um, BPO company. Okay. And like here, um, it's more of people are staying because they're first and foremost, they're comfortable with mm. the, the culture that we have. Mm. Um, everyone's treated like a family. There's so much compassion um, mm. happening in this company. I've never experienced that in the previous mm. BPO companies that okay. I've been to. Um, another thing is work-life balance mm. is really emphasized. Okay. And it's not just the for the sake of um, quote unquote work-life balance yeah. on a company yeah. because it's also within the BPO company, but how it's being practiced or how it mm. is being emphasized, it's kind of different. Um, so give us, give us an example of that. Um, like in our previous companies, there are a lot of activities that mm. um, employees are encouraged to be a part of. Like mm. we have regular sports fest, we okay. have community outreach programs. However, it's not, or unlike here mm. um, in our company, we emphasize the value of why there's a need to it. Mm. Um, we always, because there's so much, I guess um, the difference is in the huge companies, there's lesser interaction with oh, okay. the higher management yeah, okay. on how these programs are being yeah. implemented and what okay. is the, the main objective, why mm. it's being provided to the employees. Yeah, okay. And like here, um, it's discussed freely in the open. Mm. Um, and it's more of the, the family um, 
um, values that mm. are really highlighted yeah. and that the employees get to appreciate more. Okay. The That's reason cool. for them to stay. So yeah. it's not merely about um, how relaxed or how less stressful it is, because there are really days wherein stress would kick in, mm. um, depending on the the workload and oh, on the timelines. Everybody gets need. busy. That's yeah. right. However, it's something that you'd still feel comfortable mm. and you'd feel more accomplished once it yeah. gets done. Unlike um, with the previous ones, yeah. you don't feel any you don't feel a sense of accomplishment because mm. you're already so taxed and, yeah. and burnt out. Yeah, I get the sense that in those big organizations, it's a bit like you feel you're drowning at times. Maybe exactly. and you're kind of abandoned. Right. I mean, if someone was really stressed out here and busy, you know. The, Rest yes. of the family come around them. And There's always mm. some personal support coming from people yeah. around you, not just mm. from the team leaders, mm. um, even from the management. Yeah, okay. And they can even step in on your personal issues mm. if there's really a need, because mm. um, we highly believe that we hire the right people mm. and losing them would be heartbreaking. Yeah. So whatever issues that we feel that we may be of help, mm. then we would always give our time mm. and um, our efforts. I, I, I should add that Leo is not just one of our team leaders, you're effectively the two I see of the business as well. So uh, yeah, and I've, I've seen that happening here this week. It's yeah. pretty, pretty yeah. cool. It's, it's really mm. inspiring yeah. to be able to witness and experience that firsthand. Mm. Um, unlike with the, the previous employments I had, there have been some sort of, of mm. um, engagements with employees yep. um, to make them feel that mm. they belong but not on a personal level that yeah, you really okay. feel valued as a human being and not just an employee yeah I'm, i might put a couple of links below because actually I, i've been here for about 10 days and a couple of things have happened over the last 10 days that were, i found really touching about the the sort of culturally culturally and the, and the sort of family atmosphere here and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll put a link to a couple of blog posts it's kind of pretty cool stuff um okay so what other sort of insights could we give to people who are perhaps thinking of, of using virtual assistants and you know what's they might be concerned about what's what's life like being a VA okay you know, is it cons considered a reasonable job and it is a, it is a good consideration in terms of as a business person to, to hire a virtual mm. assistant um, in a sense that there are other tasks that they can just leave out of their plate mm. for them to be able to focus yeah. further on the more important things that mm. they would like to do on their business. And in terms of virtual assistance career, it's also refreshing to mm. know that you're not just confined to a, to a mindset that mm. you're working in an office and, and there's not much flexibility mm. or how should I say it, there's not much um ingenuity yeah. going on okay so being virtual assistant or being working as a virtual assistant gives you um different platforms to explore yeah. to okay. be able to improve yourself mm -hmm. your skill sets yeah. and your knowledge and also with this type of setup um, especially if it's um, an office-based mm. virtual assistant service mm. you get to have the peace of mind that you don't need to micromanage because yeah. because okay. um like in our setup Virtual Daniel will take their take care on that part for mm -hmm. the client, okay. and we always make sure that um, it's not just about delivering the service mm -hmm. that yeah. the client need, but it it's always about being able to impart growth to the people yeah. around. Okay. Because part of the struggles, I guess, of mm -hmm. of working or working with a home based virtual mm -hmm. assistant is that there's no other people that you can tap on. Yeah. Um, to, to assist you in terms of the, the correct corrective measures that needs okay. to be done to yeah. the employee. So, so the, yeah, I mean, the, the home base VA doesn't have any support around them if they're not sure how to do exactly. tasks. And yeah, there's all, all we'll, we'll do another video on home base versus office based. But uh, no, that, that's some really good insights there. Thank mm -hmm. you, Leah. And um, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. The uh, <clears throat> I've never been in one of those really big BPOs, but it sounds like it's kind of what I suspected. Um, you know, for us here at Virtual Done Well, it's very much a family and, you know, we very much take care of, uh, of the staff. It, it was funny, I had lunch with one of our new staff yesterday mm -hmm. and I said, so how, how's this different, you know, compared to some of the other BPOs you've worked in? And she looked at me and said, well, I ain't ever had lunch with the CEO before. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. Like, oh, you know, I've had lunch with everyone since I've been here. Um, 
You know, there's a couple of things that you, you talked about there, and I'd just like to pick up on a, a, a point that I continually want to emphasize with people. And that is, if you're thinking of hiring a virtual assistant, one or more, I don't like that term virtual assistant because yeah. it kind of implies some kind of robot, you know, AI, right. you know, it's right. not. It's I don't know what other term we can use, maybe remote worker or remote assistant or whatever, remote team member. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think a lot of people have this misconception, you know, virtual assistants are real, you know, yes. <laughs> they're, they're real people, they're part of your team, you know, make them feel part of your team, you know, um, get them involved in your in your company culture mm. and all the rest of it. So, um, yeah, we've got to call them something else other than virtual assistants, I think. But at the moment, that's the term that's commonly used. Leo, thanks for your insights. Uh, don't forget, if you find these videos useful, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Is it there or there? I can never remember. I think it's there. Uh, no, it's over there. And uh, we give videos out every week uh, on a Wednesday, all kinds of tips on working with virtual assistants, uh, some of the issues that you might have and so on. If you've got any comments at all, do comment below. Uh, it'll be me providing feedback or maybe Leo or some of the team. Uh, and we really, you know, if you've got any other topics that you want us to talk about, just let us know. But thanks for watching and we'll see you next week with more tips on working with virtual assistants.